In this session, we will discuss our coverage of the G-Rangers class from the Genomic Rangers package. But first, we're going to make a slight detour and discuss a new cl class in Bioconductor called Data Frame, but with a capital D and a capital F. <coughs> Why do we need a new, uh, a new class for this? Let's take an example. Uh, construct an I ranges and a data frame, a capital D data frame works like a classic R data frame, but it allows many types of objects or objects of arbitrary type as long as they have a length uh, uh, attribute to be stored in them. So the way you, uh, so for example, it allows you to store I ranges inside them. You, you construct them with the capital DF. You can have an I range here called IR, and let's say we have a score here that's um, uh, three random normal variables. So it prints nicely. We can see we have an I range that's a single column with the I range, and we can do the standard subsetting. This here gives us a specific uh, I range of length one, uh, and we can use the dollar operator uh, as we're used to. This is in contrast to what happens with a classic data frame. If we started to do this with a classic data frame, and we put an I range inside here, we'll see that it works, but it really gives us three different columns. It doesn't really keep the things uh, together. So data frames or capital data frames are slightly more versatile, and for this reason, they are used in various places in Bioconductor uh, nowadays. Let's depart from the capital data frames and return to the uh, G-Rangers. Over here in the code here, I have a little construction of a, uh, of a G-Rangers. And um, you can see uh, nothing must have happened. I've just like uh, typed in a uh, G-Range. And G-Rangers can have uh, something called values, so they can have additional columns. This is unlike I ranges, containing data and the different uh, 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 things. So the entire set of columns is called values, or element metadata, or m calls. I'll use values, so I can, I can say, and that's equal to a that that's equal to a data frame uh, uh, with values in it. So an example is going to make this much clearer. So now I have a metadata column with a score. I could have had additional columns. It gets filled out and uh, and I can access it with the values of the uh, uh, of the uh, of, of the G ranges. I can also use uh, M calls. That's basically synonymous. Uh, even more convenient ways I can use the dollar operator to access a different column. So I can do something like GR dollar score. I can even use that to assign a new thing. Let's say score two is equal to score divided by three. Oh. And I have two different columns. This is highly useful. The main workhorse of the G-Rangers class in the I-Rangers ecosystem, in my opinion, is the find overlaps function. And that works as we would expect uh, for G ranges as well. And it takes care of like bookkeeping such as uh, strand and chromosome. So let's get a new uh, let's get a new G ranges um, which has and let's have the old G ranges. They have the same ranges right but what's different is the seek names or the chromosomes and the strand. Let's try to do a fine overlap between those two things. Okay, we have a couple of overlaps here. Uh, and you'll see out of the output that the star strand overlaps with the plus strand. And the star strand also overlaps with the minus strand. It's possible to do this same query where you completely ignore strand. In this case, it's going to give, give uh, by using the ignore strand argument to the function. We get the same output. 
because there are no uh, there, there are no uh, places where uh, where we don't have an overlap because of incompatible strands. Ignore strand equals true, for example, allows elements on the positive strand to overlap elements on the negative strand. A very common use case is we have a G range and we want to only select ranges from the G range that overlaps some other elements. And for that, we have a convenience function called subset by overlaps. It's basically constructed using find overlaps. So let's uh, take our original G range here and let's do a subset by overlaps of GR and GR2. Okay, everything overlaps, so that was not too exciting. Let's turn them around and say and see here that when we ask for the uh, ranges in, in GR2, uh, we are not gonna, we don't have any overlap with the range that's on chromosome two. So we return an object with only two ranges in them. This is a very uh, convenient function. I use this a lot. Next, uh, We'll discuss another convenience function, which is called make G ranges from data frame. The idea is that we often find that we have classic R data frames uh, that store objects that looks a little bit like genomic ranges, and we want to convert them into genomic ranges. So let's make one of those. Let's take a DF and say that's data frame. Chromosome, we have something called chromosome, which is chromosome one. We have start, which is like one, two, three. And we have end, which is four, two, six. And we have a score, which again is like some random numbers. So classic uh, R data frame. We can convert that into a G ranges by, make, by calling make G ranges from a data frame. Note here that the score column gets dropped. That's the default. You can say keep extra columns equals true, and uh, you keep this extra column. So great usage. You can do a lot with G ranges, and uh, in the accompanying uh, um, uh, document, I have a little bit of uh, code or a little bit of discussion about uh, two classic use cases. Uh, and some pseudocode that attacks these use cases um, uh, using the functionality we're introduced in G ranges. So what can I say? I use this package basically every day I do computation biology and it has transformed my workflow.